Medistand. Understanding Medicine. I am Professor Azizur Rahman, and today we are going to take up this new topic, the macrocytic anemias. If you have attended my earlier lectures, we have discussed some basic approach to anemias. We have discussed the interpretation of CBC and we have also discussed microcytic anemias. And today we are going to take up this group of anemias called macrocytic anemias. And the name is self-explanatory according to the morphology. Uh, the red cells are bigger in size, but they are not fully packed with HB. That is why they are anemic, but since cell size is bigger, they are referred to as macrocytic anemias. Uh, classification of macrocytic anemias, uh, it can be classified into two groups. One is megaloblastic and megaloblastic actually refers to some specific type of premature RBCs present in the bone marrow. And these cells are big and these cells also have big uh, nucleus. So these are called megaloblasts. Occasionally they may be present in the peripheral blood also, but usually they are found in the bone marrow only in those cases of macrocytic anemias which fall in this group. And then we have non megaloblastic anemias. Some uh, in the peripheral picture would be that of macrocytic, but when we do their bone marrow, we do not find the megaloblasts. And in this group, uh, in, in the megaloblastic group, there are two main conditions, although there are some other rare conditions also, but once you find macrocytic picture in the peripheral blood, megaloblastic picture in the bone marrow, you are most probably dealing with a case of either vitamin B12 deficiency or folic acid deficiency. Both are essential for DNA synthesis and both will result in the same clinical and hematological picture. There is no easy way to differentiate between them except for when you measure vitamin B12 and folic acid. There are some subtle differences in clinical presentations also, but mostly these two conditions are indistinguishable. Then we have this uh, non-megaloblastic anemias, uh, macrocytic anemias which do not have megaloblast. Uh, chronic liver disease can cause this. Hypothyroidism can cause this. I have seen a case who actually presented with macrocytic anemia. He did not have any other clinical feature of hypothyroidism. Uh, so I, because all other causes have been ruled out, vitamin B12 was okay, folic acid was okay. When I measured his thyroid hormone, I found that he actually was deficient in uh, uh, thyroxin. Many drugs, many drugs, you know, these days we use many drugs which have anti-folate activities. Some drugs also may have effect on the vitamin B12, like this metformin. Metformin can reduce one's vitamin B12 as well as folic acid. And so the many other drugs like anti-malarials, uh, anti-microbials, uh, uh, some anti-inflammatory drugs, they have anti for it. Many disease modifying agents, anti-cancer drugs, they have uh, anti-folate action. So if somebody possessed with macrocytic anemia, I think you must go through the list of medication that patient is taking. Hemolysis, because whenever there is hemolysis, I normally classify hemolysis as normochromic normocytic anemia but when your cells are destroyed new cells are formed and newer rbcs are slightly bigger in size so that is why the overall picture you may have that of macrocytic they do not have they are not exactly ovalocytes but they are slightly bigger so mcv mean corpuscular volume will be more than normal so they may be classified as macrocytic anemias also so this is the basic classification. Let's proceed to the further discussion. Uh, some facts about vitamin B12. Uh, it's an essential uh, nutrient. It's a very, very essential vitamin. Uh, uh, it is found only in the animal food. Now this is important. If somebody is strict vegetarian, that patient is likely to have deficiency of vitamin B12. And it has got a very complex mechanism of absorption. Uh, so there could be some GI disorder also which may result in vitamin B12 deficiency. But if somebody 
does not take animal food, uh, that patient may be deficient. But luckily, uh, we have abundant vitamin D, uh, vitamin uh, sorry, vitamin B12 storage capacity. So if you or your body is sufficient in vitamin B12, it may take several years, maybe three years, before you would develop a vitamin B12 vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. <coughs> Abundant uh, stores in body, mostly in the liver and also in the bone marrow, it is required for DNA synthesis. Now, this is very, very important. DNA is not required only for the synthesis of RBCs because we are discussing anemias. So, that is why it comes in the discussion here. But what DNA is for every cell. So, whenever somebody has vitamin B12 deficiency, that patient is likely to have much more complex disease than just anemia. His body, all body cells may be affected, especially the brain cells. And commonest cause of deficiency is um, in deficiency of intrinsic factor. Now we will discuss shortly. Uh, once we take vitamin B12 orally, it is not absorbed without the help of another substance which is produced by the parietal cell. We call it intrinsic factor. So somebody may be deficient. Somebody due to autoimmune gastritis may be may not have sufficient mass of parietal cell, and that would lead to deficiency of intrinsic factor, and that would also cause a deficiency of vitamin B12 because without intrinsic factor, vitamin B12 is not absorbed. Now this is supposedly. A relatively common condition in Europe especially in Scandinavian country but in my experience it is not common at all in Pakistan we do see cases of vitamin B12 deficiency but not because of the deficiency of intrinsic factor we have other causes then it is common in strict vegetarian because vitamin B12 is not found in vegetables and fruits now let me explain how vitamin B12 is absorbed. We take it in the form of uh, fish or egg or meat and in the stomach it is released but is not absorbed unless you also have intrinsic factor coming from the parietal cell. So intrinsic factor and vitamin B12 they are bound to each other to make a stable compound. This is uh, this stable compound can sustain stomach acidity and then it passes on to the small gut and ultimately ileum. In the ileum, vitamin B12 and intrinsic factors are dissociated from each other and vitamin B12 binds to transcobalamin T and then is absorbed in the mucosal cells. So from there it is further absorbed into the circulation and it, with the transcobalamin which takes it to all the tissues. Uh, as I explained earlier, vitamin B12 is required for the synthesis of DNA. So all body cells will need vitamin B12 but it is particularly needed for bone marrow because there is very very rapid cellular activity going on in the bone marrow and it will be stored in the liver for future use and it will of course go to the other tissues practically all uh, also including muscles so if you have understood this absorption then you can easily figure out that there are a number of ways one can develop deficiency of vitamin b12 for example if somebody is not taking animal food that is one possibility or somebody's stomach is disease uh, somebody may have pernicious anemia there is autoimmune destruction of parietal cells or there may be some other kind of gastritis or patient may have undergone gastrectomy uh, you know bariatric surgery a metabolic surgery is fairly common these days so somebody after gastrectomy gastrectomy could be done due to some other reason so that could be cause of uh, uh, deficiency of intrinsic factor which will transform into deficiency of vitamin B12. Then any disease of the ileum, irrespective of the nature of the disease, any disease of the ileum, it may be Crohn's disease, it may be tuberculosis, it may be lymphoma, it may be malabsorption, it may be ileectomy. So any of the 
diseases of uh, ileum could result in deficiency of vitamin B12. So despite all this, vitamin B12 is um, uh, relatively rare. Another condition uh, which is related to intestine is the worm infestation. The tapeworm will eat up vitamin B12. So if somebody has tapeworm, once vitamin B12 is released in the small intestine, it will be taken up by the worms and will not be available for the body to absorb. So this is uh, the mechanism of vitamin B12. I hope you have understood this and this will really help you to understand the, the pathophysiology of various diseases. Now, let's talk about some basic facts about folic acid. Uh, folic acid is mainly found in vegetables, also in animal food. But the main source of uh, folic acid in our diet is vegetables and fruits. But it is destroyed by heat. That means if we cook vegetables, and uh, the folic acid will be destroyed. So the way to take folic acid from diet is to consume uncooked vegetables in the form of salads uh, and also fruits. Uh, unlike vitamin B12, folic acid is not stored in the body or at least not to that extent. Uh, it has to be taken on almost daily basis. Uh, if you take a lot of folic acid, it may be enough for a couple of weeks, maybe three, four weeks maximum, but not like vitamin B12. If you have sufficient stores, it is enough for three years. But here, I think you need to take almost daily. And it is required for DNA synthesis, just like vitamin B12. Both are involved in DNA synthesis in the series. So I think once somebody has deficiency of either one, there will be problem with the DNA synthesis. The commonest cause of macrocytic anemia is perhaps uh, is folic acid deficiency. Now, I think I have discussed earlier also, uh, but folic acid deficiency usually occurs due to some, not necessarily due to poor food intake, but many times due to uh, the effect of antifolate drugs. Uh, antifolate drugs like antimalarial, some antibiotics, uh, disease modifying agents which we commonly use for these rheumatological disorders, many anti-cancer drugs. So these drugs are antifolate. Uh, uh, so I think whenever somebody comes to you with macrocytic anemia, especially if you have documented folic acid deficiency, then you must go through the list of uh, the medication patient is taking. If possible, we have to uh, discontinue their medication, but many times it may not be possible. Then we have to give folic acid supplements. Uh, pathogenesis of megaloblastic anemia. Uh, first of all, I think there are four steps I'd like to explain. Let me display all four steps here first. Now, first of all, there is problem because vitamin B12 is deficient, folic acid deficiency, that would affect DNA synthesis. So practically, it would affect all body cells. But you know, some cells, they have much more, a much faster proliferation rate, like intestinal cells, like bone marrow cells, they would be most affected. Some cells, they grow very slowly, like hair cells, they would be probably affected. No, not actually hair cell, but Neurons, for example, they, they, they grow very slowly, so they will be affected to lesser extent. Then there would be maturation arrest because the cells are being formed, but they are not maturing because for that we need the DNA. And DNA is not formed properly and is not maturing, so there would be maturation arrest. This can be identified by a hematologist when they examine the bone marrow. They describe it as hypercellular bone marrow with maturation arrest. Because be before a certain point, there is excess of cells, but beyond that cells, beyond that point, the cells are scarce. And all bone marrow cells be will be affected. So it would not only cause anemia, it would also cause, in severe cases, it would also affect white cells, it would also affect platelets. And of course, it would affect other body cells, particularly uh, the myelin sheath, which we will discuss 
shortly then in the bone marrow in the peripheral blood it would result in ovalocytes and also a characteristic abnormality called hovel uh, jolly bodies they are present in some rbcs and rbcs and the, the, the polymorphs the neutrophils they have this characteristic abnormality they may be hyper segmented mostly we have this three to four or five uh, segments of neutrophils but if neutrophils are aging and not getting replaced by new ones then the number of uh, segments in the nucleus will increase so you could see seven eight nine segmented polymorphs in the peripheral blood if you see four five of them that means there's a very very likely that this patient has got vitamin b12 deficiency or oh, and there would be pan cytopenia also because it is required for other cell series then ultimately the most notorious or the the worst uh, manifestation of vitamin b12 or folic acid deficiency would be neurological involvement so myelin sheath is not formed and myelin sheath is required to protect the neurons and the exons so once myelin sheath is not formed there is a tendency for the neuron to degenerate and luckily if prompt action is taken well in time this would be uh, reversible and there would be some systemic involvement also initially it may just affect rbcs then it would affect other cell series and then it would affect other cells also particularly the neurons the sheath so patient may have hematological presentation or occasionally patient may present to the neurologist with this neurological manifestation and uh, on investigation that patient is found to be a case of vitamin b12 deficiency patient may be having anemia but asymptomatic but it is also possible to have neurological involvement without uh, having anemia causes of megaloblastic anemia uh, we have already discussed only vitamin b12 deficiency and folic acid deficiency would cause uh, megaloblastic anemia other etiologies will cause just macrocytic anemia pernicious anemia now pernicious anemia is a specific type of uh, megaloblastic anemia this is a condition where there is destruction of parietal cells it is an autoimmune uh, disorder a very very selective autoimmune phenomenon where antibodies are formed against parietal cells and parietal cells are destroyed selectively and parietal cells uh, are the source of intrinsic factor so in the absence of intrinsic factor vitamin b12 even if taken orally will not be absorbed then diphylobothrium latum this is a tapeworm this is perhaps common in our country and and all over the world and if and especially underdeveloped countries this worm can eat up your vitamin b12 nutritional somebody's pure vegetarian would not have sufficient vitamin b12 intake anti folate drugs i've already told you very commonly prescribed drug gastrectomy for whatever reason bariatric uh, surgery or gastrectomy due to some malignancy will take away the source of uh, intrinsic factor all small gut diseases any disease of the ileum uh, tuberculosis lymphoma uh, malabsorption resection all could cause uh, vitamin b12 deficiency and then increased metabolic demands now this is somebody uh, recovering after a severe illness would need a lot of uh, uh, folic acid and vitamin b12 uh, that may be a condition where one may develop deficiency of these two uh, clinical features uh, first of all the clinical feature would, of that of anemia now you know i told you in my earlier lecture that symptoms of anemia may be very very subtle there may not be any symptoms because this thing develops very slowly and body has got a lot of adaptability one might feel little palpitation or little fatigue but patient may be actually asymptomatic also because body and heart and circulation they adapt to uh, low hb level now in pernicious anemia 
I wonder if you know the meaning of pernicious. Pernicious is something fatal, something lethal. Now this is very very old word. Uh, when first time somebody discovered this anemia and he realized that this anemia behaves very differently. Uh, like normal iron deficiency anemia patient can tolerate much better but this this anemia due to vitamin B12 deficiency patient is likely to have much more serious manifestation including neurological and sometimes it may prove fatal. So that is why the word pernicious anemia uh, was given to this anemia. Pernicious means fatal or lethal. So it could actually prove lethal if not treated. Uh, although pernicious anemia usually refers to a specific type of megaloblastic anemia due to uh, parietal cell uh, destruction but sometimes it is used for any macrocytic anemia. Another manifestation of uh, vitamin B12 or folic acid deficiency is the uh, subacute combined degeneration of spinal cord. I mean you can figure out uh, how serious it could be. Uh, subacute is something which develops slowly. Combined means it affects multiple structures in the spinal cord the sensory nerves, the motor nerves, the long tracks and of course uh, it would have sensory symptom, it would have motor symptom but luckily if recognized uh, well in time it would be reversible. And I think there's a point I would like to make here uh, that it is uh, known, I, I'm not sure how often this happens, if somebody has vitamin B12 deficiency and you miss it and you treat it as folic acid deficiency then spinal degeneration can actually get worse. So either you go to the fullest depth of the diagnosis you make sure that you're not missing vitamin B12 deficiency or I think before we replace folic acid we may replace vitamin B12 also. So there is no harm in giving vitamin B12 even if somebody is not deficient. Then underlying disease, as we discussed earlier, these uh, deficiencies can be due to some intestinal disease. So intestinal disease may have some symptoms. So you could expect symptoms related to anemia, symptoms related to the neurological enrollment due to vitamin B12 and folic acid, and symptoms due to underlying gut disease. Uh, just some of the pictures, these are the peripheral smear of megaloblastic anemia and you may have ovalocytes. This is the classical ovalocyte. It's a big and oval shaped hovel jolly bodies. These small nodules or hovel jolly bodies. Cabot rings. If you can appreciate, I'm not sure if it is obvious. I'm just drawing my cursor along this ring. This is called cabot ring. So this is another sign of uh, uh, megaloblastic anemia. Then hyper segmented polymorphonuclear cells. These cells this is two lobe, this is single lobe, this is perhaps lymphocyte, this one. Look at this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine lobes. This one also I think six or six, seven. So these hypersegmented polymorph nuclear cells uh, would suggest the diagnosis of uh, vitamin B12 folic acid deficiency. Uh, other abnormalities which you might see. Uh, low serum vitamin B12. Now these days luckily it is this test is available. We can simply measure vitamin B12. So easy test uh, that you would of course expect in patient with vitamin B12 deficiency. And then low RBC or serum folate level depending upon uh, if patient has vitamin B12 deficiency or folic acid you can actually measure folic acid also. So you will know which one of these two or both are deficient. Then on endoscopy if you suspect gastritis uh, behind this diagnosis then you would like to do upper G endoscopy and do a gastric biopsy and you will find gastritis and in the blood you might find antibodies against intrinsic factor and parietal cells. Uh, that test is also available and then other gut abnormality depending upon what disease you're talking about for example lymphoma of ileum tuberculosis Crohn's disease they all have their own abnormalities which are actually beyond the scope of this lecture we might discuss them in GID and then Schilling test this is a very interesting test 
although not done commonly these days uh, but i i love to talk about this and because it really helps you to understand uh, this disease better now this is shilling test it has got two part now what is the objective of shilling test now objective of shilling test is that you have to demonstrate that vitamin B12 is not getting absorbed because there is deficiency of intrinsic factors. So that is a purpose. Now let's see how we do that. First of all, we give what we call flushing dose of non-radioactive vitamin B12. Now this is given in, as injection. You might wonder if we have given vitamin B12 already, how could we then proceed with the test? No, there is a theory behind this. This is the normal vitamin B12 given intramuscularly. Why intramuscularly? Because we want to make sure that this goes to the system. It is not dependent on uh, intestinal absorption. And this will make sure that all body stores are replenished. That means if our body stores are replenished, only then if vitamin B12 is absorbed from the gut will be excreted. If body is deficient and you give vitamin B12 orally, even if it is absorbed, it might not be excreted in the urine because body needed it, body kept it. So this is why we have to give, we have to saturate body with vitamin B12 first, injectable form. Then we give oral dose of radioactive vitamin B12. Now, why do we give radioactive vitamin B12? Because we want to trace this. Radioactive vitamin B12 is just like normal vitamin B12, except that it would emit radiation, very, very um, light dose, and that we can trace. Uh, so, vitamin B12 is given, uh, this radioactive is given orally. It will be absorbed. If it is absorbed from the stomach, it will, be, uh, it will go to the circulation. And then since body is already saturated with vitamin B12 by flushing dose, it would be excreted in the urine. So if it is excreted in the urine, that means there is no problem with the absorption. One had a deficiency of vitamin B12 due to dietary uh, cause. Okay. So if after this procedure, radioactivity is found in the urine that implies that vitamin b12 is excreted now vitamin b12 would be excreted only if it was absorbed and how do we know this is the same vitamin b12 because it is radioactive so this will confirm that it was absorbed and since patient had deficiency so deficiency was due to dietary cause but if it was abnormal you did not find radioactivity in the uh, in the urine, then we have to proceed with the second step. What is the second step? Uh, you give again the flushing dose and you again give oral dose of vitamin B12, but you also give intrinsic factor. All right, so intrinsic factor is also available in the form of this um, uh, medication uh, uh, just for this test. So vitamin B12 and intrinsic factor, factor uh, intrinsic factor both are administered, given orally. Now, if this time it is corrected, that means without intrinsic factor, vitamin B12 was not absorbed and excreted. But once vitamin B12 was given with intrinsic factor, it appeared in the urine. That means the radioactivity appeared in the urine. That means if it given with intrinsic factor, then it is absorbed. So that would mean that the patient actually had deficiency or absence of intrinsic factor. So that would be a definitive sign of pernicious anemia. So this is, I think, interesting. Many would want to go to step three also. If again, this is not corrected, then what one might think of malabsorption, bacterial overgrowth in the intestine. And somebody would describe this as a step three. And that means you give a course of antibiotics for two weeks. And with antibiotics, you expect all those uh, bacterial overgrowth the, to be killed. And then you do the same experiment. If the vitamin B12 is absorbed, then that would mean it was not getting absorbed because of bacterial overgrowth. So this is uh, what is called Schilling test. 
I never did it because it was never available in Pakistan. But now I know that it is never it is not done anywhere because we can measure vitamin B12 directly and we can also do uh, endoscopy to confirm the diagnosis of gastritis and we can do uh, histopathology and see that if the parietal cells are deficient. But since this is historical, I, I thought I would cover this part also. Now let's do some exercise. Let's see if you have learned uh, what I wanted to wanted you to learn. Now this is a little bit of exercise. I'm sure some certain things are very easy. Uh, in cases of macrocytic anemia, what will happen to HB and hematocrit? It will be obviously reduced because uh, we are dealing with a case of macrocytic anemia. HB, HCT will be reduced. Uh, what about mean corpuscular volume? This refers to the average cell size. The cells are likely to be big. So MCV value will be increased. What about MCH, MCHC? Now, this is a little tricky and this might remain normal. In an ideal case, you might think that MCH will be reduced, mean corpuscular hemoglobin will be reduced. But actually, these cells are very pale. When they, when somebody, some hem uh, uh, hematologist would look at this uh, smear, he would describe these as hypochromic cells. But when we measure it with the machine, the amount of hemoglobin in one individual cells may be normal because the cells are bigger. But MCHC should be reduced, but not in all cases. And vitamin B12 level will be low in those cases who have vitamin B12 deficiency. Folic acid level will be low in those cases who have folic acid deficiency. In intestinal disease, we could have deficiency of both. In malabsorption, we can have deficiency of both because both are absorbed from the intestine. Rate count will be low to begin with, but this is very important. I explained uh, this concept in another lecture also. Suppose you're dealing with a case of pernicious anemia. This person has got absolutely healthy body, healthy bone marrow, in fact, hyperplastic uh, bone marrow, but with maturation arrest, and maturation arrest is because of the deficiency of uh, vitamin B12. Once vitamin B12 is replaced in the form of injection, that maturation arrest is uh, uh, overtaken and there is prompt hemoposis. And prompt hemoposis is manifested in the form of uh, sudden rise in the uh, reticulocyte count. So if you do reticone uh, before starting treatment, it would be low. After giving one or two injections or three injections of vitamin B12, you would expect a prompt rise in rate count that will literally confirm the diagnosis. But you have to give vitamin B12 in the form of injection to make sure that this is absorbed. Then in bone marrow examination, there would be hypercellular bone marrow and megaloblastic picture. Now talking about the treatment of uh, macrocytic anemia, if somebody has vitamin B12 deficiency confirmed on vitamin B12 assays and uh, it is our common practice to give active form of vitamin B12, various preparations of vitamin B12 are available. Now, if somebody has just nutritional deficiency, I believe oral replacement, one tablet a day for maybe six months would, would be good enough. Uh, but if somebody has a stomach problem or intestinal problem, you have to give it parenterally. And if somebody has subacute combined degeneration of spinal cord, uh, that is a serious condition. Again, you will have to start with uh, intramuscular type in injection. And then of course, after some time, you can switch over to oral. Typically one milligram of mycobalamin, which is equivalent to two uh, tablets or two injections is given daily. Uh, those who have a folic acid deficiency, they can be prescribed folic acid 5 milligram tablet once a day. But I think the point I would like to make here is that those who are on anti-folate drugs, if you give folic acid drugs, uh, you, if you give just routine, a normal type of folic acid, it will not be converted into active form. So you have to give the, uh, the active form. Active form of folic acid 
is also available so that can be prescribed to those who are on antifolate drugs then deworming uh, i think even without stool test it is my practice to give uh, these drugs just a two days three days course that gives me some assurance that uh, at least we have taken care of one component of the disease it doesn't really hurt so i think deworming is is what we can do in all patients and underlying disease now underlying disease would of course require additional medication maybe surgery maybe uh, other drugs so that takes the our uh, take us from uh, out of the scope of the today's lecture the so underlying disease whatever that disease may be would also require medication so that was all i hope i was able to give you some some useful information how to approach a case of macrocytic anemia how to diagnose uh, macrocytic anemia how to differentiate from one from the other types and how to treat it and i hope i was also able to explain to you the philosophy behind shilling test so this is professor aziz rahman from medistan i really look forward to see you in my next lecture which will be on aplastic anemia thank you